<laughs> Hi, I'm Dawn. Hi, I'm Jesse. We're the owners of Shear Precision Sharpening. Wanted to take a few minutes to let you know and, and give you a little better understanding of uh, an introduction to sharpening. There's a lot of questions out there about uh, professional sharpening, um, what it is, what it entails, how it works, what machines are the best, how do I get trained, uh, all those different things. <laughs> so this is a video about who we are, how we got to where we're at, um, and what makes us different from other trainers and other equipment suppliers. And we can't remember our lines. <laughs> <laughs> we're not very polished, if you couldn't tell. But we're honest and we're sincere and this is who we are. Um, so going back quite a few years, uh, well, um, so a long time ago, in, in a state, state far, far, far away, away. <laughs> I was an aircraft development mechanic. Helped build the first seven C-17 aircraft. I was also elected... I thought it was the T-45. Uh, I did the T-45 too. Okay. T-45 aircraft trainer and the uh, Navy trainer and uh, the C-17 cargo plane for the Air Force. So uh, anyway, did that and that's where I learned how to be a craftsman, right? Uh, that's where I learned the difference um, in tools, right? The tools and equipment uh, are specifically made for specific tasks. Uh, it's pretty complicated building an airplane so it doesn't fall out of the sky. Uh, a lot of training involved. Uh, people who build those are very um, qualified skilled. technicians and skilled craftsmen. Um, and I was privileged to learn from some of the best. Uh, some fantastic people out there. Um, but for any of you who are familiar with uh, the way union seniority works, it doesn't matter how good you are. It's all about when you got hired. That's why I don't do that anymore. Maybe you shouldn't put that in there. <laughs> well, that's the truth. People are going to wonder, if you were so good at it, how come you ain't doing it anymore? Layoffs. Seniority. Well, yeah. That hurt. Yeah. So after that, I went ahead and went on um, active duty. Army. Full time. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of go back a little bit. So when I was with McDonnell Douglas... I was elected as a team leader, one of the youngest team leaders uh, ever at McDonnell Douglas. Were you 17? 19. 19. 19. So at 19, <laughs> I was elected a team leader by my peers. Uh, so my peers elected me to be their team lead. But one of the jobs of a team lead is to train his team and make sure his team members are trained in the skills that they need in order to accomplish their job. And so I got additional training myself on how to train my team. So that was really my first introduction to training people in technical skills um, mm -hmm. so that they could be better at their jobs. So move on. Layoffs happen. Join the Army. Well, in the Army, anybody who's ever been in the service, you know, the non-commissioned officer's job is to train soldiers. Sure, soldiers go through basic training, advanced individual training, and lots of other technical training in the school environment. But that's school environment. And the military is about no, the real operating thing. in real life. And so it's the NCO's job to teach soldiers how to get their job done in real life. And the Army provides excellent training to their NCOs to provide training to their soldiers, uh, other service members, uh, to keep them alive, do their job, do their job well. Um, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. So move on. I got out of the Army. After a number of years, 17 years total, I think. National Guard, Army Reserve, Active Duty Army, 17 years in service. So I got out, mm -hmm. went to job working for the Army, mm -hmm. developing training for new equipment. So in the Army, I was working with already established manuals and training things and, and equipment. So when I got out of the Army, I started developing the training for brand new equipment and going out and training soldiers on brand new equipment. Things that the Army hadn't seen before. So that gave me just another step up on how to develop training. How to, how to take something that hasn't been done before and put it in a format so that soldiers can understand how to use it. So I did that for a while. Um, one of the things that I did after I got out of the Army was I joined a local volunteer fire department. Mm -hmm. And I learned that trade. I went to fire college. Um, certified firefighter. And... Guess what? I got so good at it, I started teaching other volunteer firefighters 
how to do certain tasks. I ended up going back to the fire college and becoming a certified fire instructor. So a lot of training, learning how to give training. So that's one thing that makes us different. Mm -hmm. Don has children. Yes, our children. <laughs> so any of you parents out there know you got to teach your kids, right? Mm -hmm. She's got a lot of experience teaching too. So she teaches, you know, taught the kids how to read and write before they ever went into school. Uh, mm -hmm. Teachers really enjoyed that, didn't they? Yeah, they did. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know how to teach handwriting because I taught them the wrong style of alphabet, but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we learned them all. <laughs> that's right. And she also learned how to put up with me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I taught the kids how to put up with you too. Yeah, I taught the kids how to put up with me. Um, so that leads us to this. Um, all throughout uh, all my different careers, I've had my full-time job, but I've always done something on the side. Uh, so when I was at McDonnell Douglas, I was in the Army Reserves. Um, when I was in the Army, I worked on cars. Worked on cars for other people and fixed their cars and made a side income doing that. Um, when I got out of the Army, I was a volunteer firefighter. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've, I've always done something, uh, on, you know, at the same time I that I was doing my full-time job. Yeah, that's my <laughs> hobby is having hobbies that that are really work, right? Um, but I enjoyed them. Uh, and that's how I got into sharpening. Uh, so I decided to, uh, well, kind of rewind a little bit. Don was a groomer. Um, mm -hmm. When the kids got old enough to be in school and... She didn't have to be at home all the time taking care of the kids. Um, she got a job as a groomer. Mm -hmm. And so she was grooming dogs. And she was buying all kinds of equipment. And I just kept asking her. I said, well, why do you need all them scissors? Well, why do you need all them flipper blades? Right. Because uh, I just didn't know. But he didn't say it very nicely. Well, <laughs> no. Those things are expensive, you know. Uh, as anybody who grooms or cuts hair or anything knows, um, quality tools are, are pricey. So I was asking those questions, and she got fed up with me asking her about it. And she finally she said, uh, well, there ain't nobody around here that can sharpen them worth a darn, so unless you want to sharpen them for me, i got to buy extra stuff because i got to send them away someplace to get them sharpened. So that kind of got me thinking a little bit. I was like, well, it can't be that hard. I mean, I built airplanes for a living. Right. I fixed cars. You know, I did all that kind of stuff. Um, so I started looking into it, started doing some research. Um, bought a couple of machines, uh, bought mm -hmm. the Ukami Gold, the Wolf Ukami Gold. Yep. Yeah, still got it sitting over there. And we got the Extreme Cut Clipper Blade Sharpening Machine. Uh, and those were the first two pieces of equipment we got. And we started I, in our garage, yep, too. started in the garage. So started doing that, uh, teaching myself using her equipment. She had some friends who were groomers, quite a few friends, and they had uh, been grooming for a very long time, had lots of old equipment that they didn't mind me uh, practicing on and messing up. So mm -hmm. um, that's how I got started. Now, that wasn't my professional. That was just getting started to learn to trade. Um, there wasn't, you know, if you remember, Internet over the last 10 years has really taken off. There is a lot of information on the Internet. When we started, there wasn't that much information. Mm -mm. Um, but I did get some training videos that came with the machines. And, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty handy with my hands. I've built airplanes, built cars, um, pretty technical. I was in communications in the Army, so I know how to interpret manuals and things like that, the practical application. Uh, so I went out there with all those old tools and proceeded to mess them up. So <laughs> that's when I said, hmm, there's more to this than what you think. This is a lot more challenging than what I ever thought it would be. No wonder she was having such a hard time finding somebody who knew what they were doing. It's yeah. challenging. So kept doing that, kept learning, getting feedback from, from Dawn and her friends, and she was grooming. And uh, I got better and got better and got better. And uh, pretty soon, uh, her friend said, you know, uh, you're better than a lot of people we've used over the years. You should think about doing this professionally, not just for us. Um, and it kind of built up my confidence and, and let me know how good I was. So I, I expanded a little bit and started offering the service to more of her grooming friends and girls in other shops and the word kind of spread and I ended up doing quite a few groomers mm -hmm. um, and that helped a lot because that exposed me to a lot of different scissors a lot of different clipper blades and a lot of different problems and and things and gave me that experience under my belt until finally we said you know probably go ahead and 
go professional and start charging people and actually go out there and do cold calls and build this business. Now, I had a day job. This is just my side job that I started, just like all the other side jobs I've done my whole life. Um, but I had a plan. I said, well, you know, this is something I like. I enjoy. I can do it. Um, had a, so the Army's pretty tough on people, and I couldn't climb under and around cars the way I used to when I was younger. So this allowed me to do stuff with my hands. It was technically challenging, um, but not so physically demanding. Uh, so that Certainly made a big difference. less demanding than being a firefighter, too. Yeah, a lot less demanding than being a firefighter. So uh, hauling all that gear inside a burning house and, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a a lot bit. of respect for those volunteer firefighters. They don't get paid for risking their lives. That's right. Um, they do it because they care. Anyway, so just started sharpening and moving on from there and uh, started... Uh, going into beauty salons and offering with the scissors because uh, most of our customers or my customers at that point dawn was still grooming and she wasn't sharpening yet uh, mm -hmm. although she was curious was asking questions and learning from me mm -hmm. um, and so i would explain to her what i was doing and why i was doing it um, and then my day job sent me overseas so i was like well what are we going to do with all these customers we got Right. It's going to have to do something. <laughs> so I either go tell them all, sorry, it's going to be a year before I can, I'll be back to help you, or teach Don. So Don said, you know, I think I can I do can that. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, I think you can it's do it. It's got to be too. easier than wrangling puppies. <laughs> <laughs> so I started teaching her how to do it. Now, you got to remember, Don's left-handed. Left the only one of us in the right mind, right? <laughs> So that was a bit of a challenge because I'm right-handed. Uh, so teaching a left-handed person how to do things when you're right-handed, um, particularly when it uh, takes that much hand-eye coordination. Um, and it's very hands-on and there's some very um, detailed, fine techniques that you have to learn. It was a little challenging, but she got the hang of it because she understood the theory and the concepts and she developed her own techniques to get the results. Because uh, she couldn't Just do because. it the way I did it, because I was doing it right-handed, and I was looking at it from a different angle and a different view. Um, so That's because lefties have to learn to adapt to a right-handed world. Right. So, and if, you, if you're wondering how could it be that different, just look how a left-handed person has to write in a right-handed dominated world, at least in the English language, from left to right, top to bottom. And you see how different it is. They've got to hold their hand different. They've got to do all that. Just be able to get the same looking letters and words that we right-handed people do a lot easier. So that's where the challenge was. So she learned that, she got very good at it. And while I was gone, she was taking care of our, our customers for us. Uh, as a matter of fact, she took care of our customers so well that the business grew, grew quite substantially. Uh, and that was pickup and delivery, because uh, yeah. we were still based out of our garage and was pickup and delivery. And uh, the business just kept going, growing and growing and growing. And so when I got back, they said, hey, uh, maybe we're, we're ready to go to the next step. Uh, maybe we'll go mobile. And Don uh, stopped grooming dogs and just sharpened full time. Mm -hmm. And we got a van and we outfitted it to go mobile, put all the equipment in there, bought some new equipment as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, as a matter of fact, yeah, when I got back, we went to the NBTSG. Was yeah, that back when in we 2010. Went? Okay. Yeah, 2010, we went to the MBTSG. And because uh, and we were, I was specifically looking to expand and get a new machine because the uh, we were getting a lot more convex scissors. Right. Yeah. So decided, all right, maybe we need to get some new equipment so that we can do these other things better, quicker, easier. And where else to go but... You know, this guild place. convention of a whole bunch of sharpeners. We're going to have lots of vendors there, lots of different machines, all at the same place. So I don't have to travel all over the country to see all these different machines and talk to the manufacturers. Um, Internet still wasn't real big right then. Uh, so there wasn't a whole lot online yet. Well, we had Internet. We had just... Internet, but YouTube wasn't, you know, you didn't well, have millions yeah. of videos on YouTube showing all these different machines and all of that stuff. Yeah, I guess you that's know, true. It was all text right so it really depended on how well somebody wrote <laughs> and how good their pictures were right um, there was a lot of pictures <laughs> yeah a lot of pictures so it's just like hmm 
I'm the type of guy that I really want to get my hands on it right. in order to check it out. And I'm the same way. Yeah. So we decided, all right, let's go to the MBTSG. So we went to the MBTSG, specifically looking to get a flat home. That's what I was looking at because that's what everybody had, it seemed like. That's what everybody used to do convex scissors. So we're going to go get a flat home. I just wasn't sure which one. So we went there, had a fantastic time, met some great people. It was fun, yeah. And walked out with an easy VIX. Yep, we did. Which is absolutely nothing like a flat home. No, it's not. No. <laughs> but we were still doing a lot of groomers. And coated scissors were hitting real big, especially in the grooming industry. Yeah. Pinks and purples and all these bright, black colorful black ones. All these colorful scissors. And uh, with, the, with the Okami Gold, I could not do a convex and keep that coating on it. Um, so that was a real challenge. Well, we went and we met Mike. Um, yeah. Uh, the inventor of the Easy Vex. So we met him at the MBTSG. And just kept going back and going back and watching him. Because I was not there to get one of those. I was there to get a flat home. But I found it really fascinating. Yeah. And I kept saying. I stayed there and watched it for probably an hour. <laughs> right. So I went and I did check out all of the flat homes and I talked to the flat home manufacturers and they all had very good machines. Mm -hmm. I just kept finding myself going back to Mike's machine with that easy vex all the time. Okay. Um, so at the end of the convention, we ended up walking away with an easy vex. Uh, it, it fit fit our needs a little more. It did convex scissors, all convex scissors. Uh, it did them very well, but it really did the long curved scissors better than anything I saw. Um, with the technique and as quick as it did, and plus the coated. There is nothing else out there that can do the coated scissors like the Easy Vex. So we walked out with that. So that was in 2010. Mm -hmm. Came back home, uh, put the van together, and started doing mobile sharpening. And we were out there a couple of years, yeah. you know, building the business, mostly Dawn. Uh, her sister came on board and was helping her out. Um, and so they would go do the... We went and did a mobile route. Yep, did a mobile route. Especially when you were gone overseas. Yep. So I went overseas. Quite a lot. Quite a lot, yep. Uh, so Don did the mobile route, and it was 2012. And took care of the kids. Yep. Went back to the MBTSG, and we had been doing it long enough that we thought we could certify. Mm -hmm. And so we went back to the MBTSG in 2012 with the intentions of certifying and scissors and myself and clipper blades. Mm -hmm. And so we went up there, and we both certified yeah. using the Easy Vex. We were the first and only people to certify using with the, the Guild Vex. using the Easy Vex. Um, so we, and then we got certified in Clipper Blades as well. Fantastic learning experience. We thought we were good until we went through that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> then you learn how much more you have to learn. Right. right? So you got to remember, we'd already, we've been doing it for four years. Yeah, at least. And a uh, very successful business. Growing our business, our customers were happy with our work. Um, mm -hmm. But we learned how to take it to the next level. So that's the other thing about this that is really an interesting experience. Is uh, the more you learn, the more you find out there's more to learn. Right. You can always take it to the next level. And there's a lot of different customers. Um, you can go into a lot of different areas with sharpening. Right. You can do groomers. You can do beauty salons. You can do barbers. Uh, you can do lots of stuff. We'll get into that a little bit later. Industrial chicken house. Shots. Industrial chickens. I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff you can do. <laughs> industrial chickens. Yep, industrial chickens. We got some of them chicken farms around here. Yep. Uh, that's where we were. Okay, so we certified in, in 2012 with the MBTSG. Uh, went back in 2013 with the MBTSG and mm -hmm. certified master. Uh, that's how much we learned out of that first certification is we went back, we uh, made our techniques better, we practiced more, we honed our skills, and we went back in 2013. And Don certified master mm -hmm. in scissors, and I certified master in blades. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned also that first time that doing both of them during the same convention was really, really stressful. Wow. I don't know if it was stressful, but it was certainly hectic. Hectic, yes. <laughs> don't remember a whole lot of the convention other than and the certifications, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> Didn't have time to do anything but, but we the had a good time. I remember we had, had a, a good time. time. Yeah, yeah. 
But the other thing that happened in 2013 when we went there oh, was... Is, is that when I got my car? That is when I got my car. That's when you got your ass. Yeah, <laughs> you got her car. Got... But anyway, <laughs> um, the, the other unique thing or the, the um, thing about that convention was um, we hadn't been training before this. It was nowhere, uh, not even a thought in our head. Mm-hmm. But uh, Mike and Pam had... a. Uh, an EasyVax person who was having some challenges doing some things. Um, so they knew we were going to be at the convention, and they knew this gentleman lived in that area. And so they got a hold of us and said, hey, you know, this guy's having problems. So he's not going to be able to make it up to Ohio uh, anytime soon. Uh, if he came by, would you mind helping him out, giving him a, a couple of pointers? Because there's nothing like one-on-one, hands-on, in-person to help identify problems. Mm-hmm. And we said, yeah, sure, we can do that. Yep. So at the convention, it ended up, I was on the board, and I was very involved in the activities of the convention. Um, and so the gentleman showed up, and we went out to our van, because we drove our van out there, and proceeded to show him some things, but I had obligations, so I couldn't stay there and help the gentleman. Don just, she just certified master, and she used that easy vex to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I encouraged her to go ahead. She knew what she was doing. Um, when he talked to her about his issues and his challenges, she knew exactly what he was talking about and felt comfortable that she could help him address it. So I said, why don't you go ahead and help him out there, mm-hmm. and I'll go take care of what I need to take care of with the convention. And so Don sat out there, and she went through well, a few hours. Is it that long? Oh, yeah, a few hours just sitting okay. there, <laughs> talking shop with him, showing him techniques and, and how to correct some of the problems he was having. And uh, he was really happy with it. And, and at the end of the, that time, uh, he brought some customer scissors with him that he was having challenges with. And he fixed those scissors and got them to work appropriately. Yeah, I walked uh, him through it, yeah, I think. Yeah, Don just walked him through it, but he actually did the work. And he was really happy with that. And that's when I realized. I said, well, gee, you're really good at that. And I know I'm good at it, but <laughs> hey, you, you're really good at that. Maybe we should think about offering this as a service. Uh, so we contacted Mike and Pam and said, hey, mm-hmm. um, we really enjoyed that and we think we helped them out a lot. So if you, you know, if there's anybody else that calls and asks for, for help, send them our way. We'd be happy to, to give them a hand. I think we're going we're gonna to put training up as one of the services that we offer. And now we didn't publicize it. We didn't advertise it. We didn't go out there really um, digging up the business or anything like that because, you know, we're sharpeners. Um, so we just stuck it out there, and those few people that found us and wanted to come, they came, and, uh, and we trained them. And Don got better and better. That's one of the unique things that we offer as well. She's left-handed. She's female. She has a different perspective on things. I'm right-handed. I'm a guy. You know, we just we go about things differently. Um, we've trained women. We've trained men. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've tra- we trained a boy. We trained a boy, yeah. <laughs> so we trained husband-wife. We've tried trained wife-husband. And father and son. Uh, right. One of the other things that we do, uh, so you get both of us. When there's a training session, you get both of us. So you get two for the price of one. Yep, <laughs> two master sharpeners for the price of one. Um, and we take a couple of people because we, just like us, we realize people are usually in it with their partners, you know, whether it's their spouse or their sibling or their father or parent or son or daughter or whatever it is, they're usually partnered with somebody. Even if their partner isn't going to do the hands-on application, it's good that they understand what it is that they're doing so that they can provide the support. Um, and so, you know, we allow a couple of people to come in. Some of them just sit and watch, you know, while one learns the hands-on. Mm-hmm. But others, we, we taught both of them the hands-on. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Don took one, I took the other, and then we, we changed. We, the other thing that we offer is we've got all these different machines. Right. Uh, I think that makes it a little unique because I don't think most people have so much equipment. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of tools. We have a we have a small problem. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we seem to collect. We're collectors. <laughs> Tool collectors. Yes. yes. <laughs> but you know, it's like the beginning of this video. Every tool has a purpose. And you're the right tool for the right job, and it gets done better, quicker, and easier. So. Uh, so we offer that as well. Um, we've had people come uh, just to train on the EasyVex, and they end up trying to flat home, um, trying to twice as sharp. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Now, before we didn't offer equipment, uh, we didn't sell it. Uh, mm -hmm. We just trained on all the equipment that we had. And I think everybody that came to train with, with us, us asked us if we could sell them the equipment that we taught them on. At least most everybody you has. Well, but we didn't at that time. So we provided them with contact information for the machines that they were interested in. And uh, they went out and they got the machines. Mm -hmm. um, but that's part of what we offer is check it out. See which one works for you. Um, because they're all different. You know, you know, so it depends on what it is that you want to do as to which machine you're going to use. So we'll help you figure that out. Um, but now, uh, just within the last year, uh, we've become distributors for all the equipment that we use. Um, mm -hmm. Mike and Pam uh, up With at the Easy, Easy Vex. Vex yeah. Yeah. They offer distributorships, and so we said, absolutely, we'll sell that machine. We've had a lot of people ask us about it. So we sell the Easy Vex, and we said, well, you know, since, uh, since we're going to do that, let's, let's ask all the rest of them if we can sell their machines as well. And they all agreed and said, yeah, we'd love to have you sell our machines. Uh, so now we are authorized for uh, distributors yeah. and Wolf and Hamaguri, yep. right? And Nebraska Blades. And Nebraska Blades. Yeah, so we're Jason. <laughs> authorized distributors for all of that equipment, and we're also approved trainers for all of them. Uh, we've known all of them for a number of years, worked with them. Um, they trained us in, in a lot of different techniques because it's their equipment. So we learned from the manufacturers mm -hmm. how to use their equipment. And they all blessed off and said, yeah, you guys, uh, your skills and your techniques are all up to par. And we'd love to have you teach how to use our equipment. So that's where we are today. Right. Yeah. So if that interests you at all, right. um, feel free to go ahead. And this is the free portion. Kind of gives you an introduction of who we are. Um, why would you want to come train with us? Um, I think that covers about everything. If that mm -hmm. interests you. Uh, there's an, right. a following a follow-on video that you can watch. It gets a lot more into depth details uh, about sharpening and some things you need to know about sharpening, so that you can make an even more informed decision. Uh, this so the next video is really our first. I don't know how long the video is going to be at this point, but our first portion of whatever training we give to people that come sit down with us. We sit down and we explain to them mm -hmm. in detail what types of scissors they are, what makes them different, what types of sharpening there is, what the different um, fields or the customer bases are, and all of that. Uh, you get down to the, the base level so that we can build off of that. Because if you pick the wrong industry to go sharpen with... Um, well, you probably won't be very happy doing yeah, it. Yeah, you won't be very happy. Um you know, and if you pick a machine that you don't like, that is awkward for you or that you struggle with, you're not going to enjoy sharpening. Uh, and, and that would be unfortunate because we, we really enjoy sharpening. We like the people. We like the industry. We like our customers. Um, and we hope you like it too. Hmm. So one other thing I wanted to mention was our training. So we offer half days training or full day training or more than a full day if you want to do a day and a half or two days. We have had some people schedule a half day's worth of training. Yeah. But we've never had anybody only do a half day's worth of training. So keep that in mind. Um, I think two full days is what we've offered. Right. But even after, you know, because we, we primarily do our training on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And that's when our shop and our store is closed. So you get both of us. You get our full attention. Um, if you do ask for a half a day's worth of training... That half a day's training will start in the morning uh, because I know it's probably going to keep going into a full day. So just keep, keep that in mind as well. I'll be happy to schedule a half a day, and after a half a day, if you've had enough of it and you're done, awesome. We just haven't had anybody do that yet. Right. Um, we have had a day and a half, um, and that's only because they had a plane to catch. They had to right. be back at school on Monday and had to catch a plane on Sunday afternoon. So mm -hmm. we did a long day Saturday. Yeah. And it started early on a Sunday, and then they had to leave. So just wanted to bring that up so that you're aware of that. If you have mm -hmm. any questions, um, feel free to give us a call, shoot us an email, message us on Facebook. If you're local, come by the shop, and we'll be happy to talk to you some more in person. Other than that, if you're really interested in learning more, go ahead 
and go to the follow on video. That sounds good. Yeah. Is that, is that it? Is that it? <laughs> I think that's it. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs>